Okay, after getting so many emails um, on uh, the German talk about uh, GWT and PhoneGap and MGWT, I decided um, just to take uh, the slides and just put some information as well in, in uh, English on the web. So uh, bear with me, I didn't prepare anything to speak in English. I'm not a native speaker, so this might not sound that great for uh, someone who's speaking English on a very regular basis, but bear with me. Um, okay, and first let me introduce me. I'm the, um, well, what would you say? I'm the founder of MGWT, Daniel Kurka. I'm a software architect and I love to do open source. And I have been um, doing web development for more than for more than 13, 14 years, almost 15 years now. And uh, this is why I think uh, mobile apps have to go away. I don't think they are a very good concept. Um, and to explain why, I uh, have to take a little time. Uh, one thing to know about me, I'm some kind of a prototype for a geek. So if I want to know something about transportation, about vehicles, I just go ahead and build them myself. If I want to learn how to do skateboarding, I just build myself a self-balancing skateboard. If I want to know something about um, electricity, I play around with Tesla coils. And if I want to know something about physics, I just build myself something that can fly. So I've built a lot of hardware during the years and a lot more software. And so you can imagine 2007 has been a great year for me because finally I was able to take all that software with me in my pocket. And uh, there was one thing happening, um, if you love software that much, you get a lot of it on your phone. And essentially your phone is just full of software. At first those were 144 um, uh, apps you could take with you. That was, I think, nine home screens uh, and 16 icons per home screen, so that's 144, and the four at the bottom. Apple quickly decided that this is not enough. It wasn't enough for me anyway, and uh, introduced uh, some concept called folders on the iPhone, and so you get something around uh, 1,600 uh, 1, apps on your phone. And my first reaction to that was, really? Do normal users really want 1,600 apps on their phone? I think this is just confusing and it's plain wrong. And uh, let's think about the web for a second. Um, when the web started off, there was a company called Yahoo. And uh, they had a bunch of people who sat around and watched uh, all kinds of web pages on the internet and put them in some kind of catalog. And then... Uh, this was a very hard process because you had to have humans who actually do this job. And then Google came along and Google decided, okay, we the number of web pages we get on the web will explode in just a few years. And this job, we won't have enough resource to do this, so we have to automate in some kind of way. So they did. And um, also, the, the other thing they did, they just didn't just index stuff. They also were able to tell the users what he really wants. So if you take a look at the search results in Google, you'll find that the first five results normally are very good for you. So you end up with a bunch of happy users. So let's take a look at app stores right now. Um, app stores are pretty much the same. People put content in them manually and the user has to take a look at the app store and decide what he likes and what he doesn't like. So this is kind of Yahoo stuff at the startup. And this reminds me of this situation where the user has to manage their phone and manage the applications on it. Somehow he has to um, collect the garbage from the phone. And I think this is getting much, much worse over time. And not just for people like me who have too much software on their phones, just for normal people as well. Because people will start paying their coffee with uh, their phones. They will start to pay for their shopping with their phones if they need some uh, if they need some fuel if they get to a bus stop and uh, uh, they just they they want to buy a ticket know when the next bus comes so they're going to do a lot more things with their phone in the very near future and 
there's another thing right now many web pages started to put apps out there so if you go to the fail block they um, actually suggest even though you're on the web page to install an app I'm already on the page please just show me the content I don't want to install hundreds or even thousands of apps for all the small web pages I visit I just want to see the stuff and then there's another thing people are building those smart devices and I said I've built a lot of hardware and if you take the look at the costs for um, CPUs, small CPUs, they're going down, 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 down. So eventually they will be almost free and so they will be everywhere. So let's say you will be able to open your car with your phone, your, your front door, um, you will be able to close the sheets at home, um, use your stereo, the stuff in your refrigerator, I don't know, you will be able to to talk with it through your phone. So the things are just going to explode that we want to do with our phones. And let me quickly sum that up, that's Zusammenfassung, that's uh, <laughs> yeah, summing up in German. Um, I think the things we want to do with our phones, the normal user, they will explode over the next years. Surely there will be some apps which are very important, and you can think of them as favorites in your browser today things you want to do on a regular basis. You will have apps for that. That's fine. Okay. But for the other stuff, that's the web. And the web is um, a good place to go. You don't think about installing something, you just go on a website. If it's not good, you just leave. And this is why I decided um, apps must go away. And we need some kind of technologies that we don't have to do everything all over again. And I think uh, with uh, the technology stack we got with PhoneGap, GWT, and GWT, GWT PhoneGap, we got a very good stack for building stuff once, deploying it on the web, and running out the phone uh, on the phones as well. So let me introduce PhoneGap. PhoneGap started off with a very simple problem. When you want to produce software for all those mobile platforms, let's say Apple and all the different vendors you get there, um, and you have all those different operating systems with all those different languages and APIs. So you have to uh, go there all over again, learn them once and again and over again. And you got you have to have a big team of people just learning those APIs. And they are constantly changing every year. And this just looks to me like a big fail. We already know a very good way to deploy software all over devices without caring too much about the device. And it's called the web. And this worked perfectly fine in the last 10 years. And now we're leaving this paradigm. And essentially, PhoneGap is a very easy way to deploy a great HTML5 apps on several phones and not really care about the device. Um, let's start off with a comparison between native apps and web apps. This is something many people have done before me and many have done much much better than I could do but uh, essentially it always drills down to you have development costs and dev time and portability which is very bad for native apps if you did something on Android you can reuse it on iOS and vice versa you have very good performance you have all the native capabilities like as, uh, accessing the file system or um, accessing contacts on the phone and it can be in app stores but on the other hand, if you are a web app, you have um, a very fast development cycle, and therefore you have low costs, you gain all the portability. And you do have good performance if you know what you're doing, but you, have not, you don't have access to any native functionality like file system or um, uh, contacts. And you certainly can't be in any app stores. But if you put PhoneGap in the mix, this changes because essentially PhoneGap is um, some kind of hybrid. It's it's some kind of wrapper and, and an app which gives you um, a very easy access to all the platform features. So you write your um, UI in an HTML5 app and you have the standard functionality which you can access all the things from the device. So there's one big promise with PhoneGap. You build stuff once, put PhoneGap around and you can run it everywhere. And running everywhere really means running everywhere. Uh, right now, I think this is about three months old. This is um, uh, this is a list of which APIs are available on which platforms. So there's iOS, Android, uh, BlackBerry, WebOS, Symbian, Bada. 
Windows Phone is should be doing great. It's not on the list, but it should be doing great. And uh, on all those platforms, you can access an accelerometer if they are there, camera, compass, contacts, file, and so on. So let us quickly recap. If you got a good HTML5 app, you can use PhoneGap to make it behave and be a, like a native app. You can access all the stuff a native app could do, but because in some way you are a native app. So now all we need is a great HTML5 app, and for me, the tool of choice, that's just my choice, you can choose differently if you like, is uh, GWT. Um, I've been working for I think more than three and a half years with GWT on a daily on a daily basis. I really come to love GWT. This is why I contribute uh, regularly. And GWT essentially just lets you do HTML5 apps in Java. Um, this has one big advantage because you can reuse knowledge of Java in your teams. You can uh, use all the tools and all the IDE stuff. And essentially just feed your Java code down to a compiler, which generates very good and very efficient JavaScript. And efficiency is very important on mobile. Um, because on mobile we do have slow CPUs, we do run on batteries, and if we do stuff badly, we just drain those batteries. We do have very slow network connections. And this is why I chose uh, GWT, because GWT is really good at getting everything out just being very very fast at what it does with uh, GWT we are we can inline CSS we can uh, make sure we only do one fetch from the server so it's very fast but if you put phone gap and GWT on uh, slide they end up there's some kind of gap in between and they cannot really talk to each other and GWT today is missing on some great mobile widgets and this is why we, about one and a half year ago we started MGWT and GWT PhoneGap. Uh, MGWT as the name says and mobile GWT is just uh, mobile widgets for GWT. Um, they try to be very lightweight, they have very small DOM and uh, they just have good looking styling. And GW PhoneGap as the name suggests is just the possibility from to speak with PhoneGap from GWT. Um, both projects are on a very open license, Apache 2.0, and uh, a great tool kit for writing great HTML5 apps. And so, if you do that, you build stuff just once. You are able to deploy it to an app store, but you can also just put it in the web with some little less functionality. You cannot access context, but if someone just wants a quick info, you can use the same app the same stuff on the web, the same looking stuff that you would use on an app. So from people that need to um, garbage collect their phones, constantly deleting old apps that they don't really need anymore, and so, uh, you, you, they don't need that anymore. If you just have a small information, you could put it on the web. If, if the user decides it won't, he wants to do that regularly every, I don't know, every day, you can decide to install your app. That's much better. So you end up with a bunch of happy users, and um, as many people don't know how this would look like on a, um, on a phone. So for the talk, uh, MJWT introduction talk, I just prepared some uh, slides with screenshots. And MJWT on an iPhone just looks like an iPhone should uh, iPhone app should look like. No real difference here. We got input controls, we got lists with stuff, we got dialogues, we got progress bars, search boxes, sliders, um, tab bars. But if you start with such an approach, just HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, if you come to a second platform, you can just restyle. So on iPad, we look exactly like an iPad app should look like. Um, if you like to, like to, like to customize this, um, um, put in your corporate identity, uh, this is just some plain CSS, put in some other background, some images, and you're fine. So on an iPad, this looks like an iPad app should look like. I'm just going to go through here real quick so you get an impression of what it actually looks like. Um, and on Android, of course, on Android, we look like an Android app should look like. This is based on an Android follow style with buttons, input elements, and dialogues, and the stuff you already saw on iOS. 
So if I would go to BlackBerry, it would look like a BlackBerry app should look like. And uh, if we're going to introduce Windows Phone in the next month or so, it's going to look like a Windows Phone app should look like. So if you're interested in the stuff, mlsgwt.com, this is the entry point for all the open source stuff you've just seen. And if you like what I'm what I'm telling you, what I'm talking about, at Dan Kuoka on Twitter. So I'm not going to do here on the, the uh, home recorded uh, talk, the demo on uh, MGWT. There are lots of uh, videos on YouTube. You can watch them if you want to see how it looks on the phone. So this is um, was a very basic introductory talk on MGWT, nothing real fancy, just um, the, talking about the motivation and why I think building apps with um, GWT really makes sense. Um, so hopefully um, uh, there will be some, even some talks in English, um, I think in March and April. Um, which I think will be recorded, so we're going to go into technical details about uh, why MJWT does things in a certain way and why it's a very good idea um, to handle things like we do because we get great performance. But this uh, is all for now. So, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. And hope you excuse my uh, possibly bad English. <laughs>